Hello there, Mr. Sutton here with the AB Calculus Chapter 3 Quiz 4 Extra Practice Number 1 Solutions on Derivatives of Transcendental Functions. To take the derivative of this one, we're going to use the product rule. So u prime v plus uv prime. Set up our box and ribbon here. We've got factors of x cubed and sine of x cubed, and their derivatives will be 3x squared. And let's see here, this will be, we have, need a chain rule here. Sine of something derivative is going to be cosine of the something, so cosine of x cubed, times the derivative of x cubed, which is, again, 3x squared. All right, putting it back together with the ribbon, we've got 3x squared times sine of x cubed plus x cubed cosine of x cubed 3x squared. For this problem, we want the derivative of sine of 2x over tan of 2x. Now, one way to do this is with a quotient rule. But if you do a little trig simplifying, you can save yourself a few steps here. So this tan function down here, this is really sine over cosine of 2x. If we multiply by the reciprocal, then we end up with sine of 2x times cosine of 2x over sine of 2x. Those signs are going to cancel out, leaving us with just cosine of 2x. And then the derivative of that's going to require the chain rule. Derivative of cosine in general is negative sine. Um, so we're going to have negative sine of 2x with a tail of 2. So that's going to be negative 2 sine of 2x. For this problem, we want the derivative of this expression. Going from left to right, we've got derivative of x cubed, which is 3x squared. And now this next one, if you wanted to, you could split this up into radical 5 times uh, radical x cubed and make that like x to the 3 over 2. But it actually is just as fast just to use the chain rule here. So this one half, uh, this is this uh, square root is really like a one half power. So using our power rule, we have minus one half times all this stuff to the negative one half times the derivative of five x uh, cubed because we're doing the chain rule. Um, so that's a fifteen x squared that we have out there as well. On this problem, we want the derivative of this crazy expression. So this could be a big chain rule with a. a product and a quotient rule inside, or if we simplify this using some log rules, we can save ourselves a little bit of trouble. So I'm going to use the rule that a multiplication turns into addition and division turns into subtraction. So I'm going to split up this log. We have ln of e to the x squared plus 1 minus whatever is down here with an ln, so minus 4 to the x, and also minus ln of cotan of x. And this is ln of 4 to the x here. All right, so going through and simplifying a little bit, ln and e cancel. This is just x squared plus 1. Over here, we can pop out this exponent, leaving us with minus x ln of 4. And over here, ln of cotan is just what it is. OK, moving forward then, let's differentiate from left to right. x squared derivative is 2x. And let's see, 1 is just going to be 0 if you differentiate that. This x ln of 4, remember ln of 4 is a constant. So this is really just the line rule being used to give us negative ln of 4. And then finally over here, going to have to use the chain rule. So I've got ln of something, derivative of that is 1 over the something. So we have minus 1 over cotan of x times the derivative of the something, derivative of cotan, which is negative cosecant squared of x. For this problem, I want the derivative of e to the pi times sine of e to the x. At first glance, this looks like a product rule, but this e to the, the pi here, this is actually just a constant. So it's really just going to be a chain rule involving sine of e to the x, and this e to the pi is just kind of along for the ride as a coefficient. All right, so we have sine of something. Derivative of that is cosine of the something. So we have e to the pi cosine of e to the x times the derivative of the inner function here, which is also e to the x. And this one's actually done. On this problem, I want the derivative of this crazy expression. So this is going to end up being a product rule. We've got u prime v plus u v prime. Setting up our box and ribbon, we have factors of 4 cosine of x and arctan of x cubed. So this 4 cosine of x, this is just going to be negative 4 sine of x. This next one is going to require the chain rule. So I have arctan of something, which is going to be 1 over the something squared plus 1. So 1 over x cubed squared plus 1. 
And uh, there's just a 1 up here. So when I multiply by the tail, I'm just going to put it up here because I'm just replacing the 1, multiplying by 1. So we're going to be multiplying by the derivative of the something, the x cubed here, which is 3x squared. And again, I'll just put that in the numerator here. All right. So multiplying this out with the ribbon, I have negative sine of x, arctan of x cubed, plus 4 cosine of x times all this stuff down here. And that's a wrap. For this problem, since I have a variable in both the base and the exponent, I'm going to have to use logarithmic differentiation. I'll start by taking the ln of both sides, leaving me with ln of y on the left. And on the right, we use our pop-out rule. So this e to the x exponent pops out in front, and we have ln of secant of x. So let's see, ln of y, that's going to be 1 over y times dy over dx. We have to differentiate implicitly here. And now for the right side, I need the product rule. So I have factors of e to the x and ln of secant of x. Derivative of e to the x is also e to the x. Derivative of ln of secant of x, that's going to be 1 over the something, 1 over secant of x, times the derivative of secant, which is secant of x tan of x. And yeah, I could cancel those out in a sec. Um, so multiplying it all back out, we have e, e to the x times ln of secant of x. And then going this other way, we're going to have, we could cancel these secants if we wanted to. So e to the x, tan of x would be the most simplified version of this. But we're not quite done because we want to get this all in terms of x. So we multiply uh, both sides by y. We have to isolate dy over dx anyway. Um, so multiply both sides by y. We have y times all the stuff that was over here. And now if I wanted to, I could replace y with the original function, secant of x to the e to the x. And this would be fully simplified in terms of x. To take the derivative of this problem, I'm going to start by simplifying a little bit using my pop-out rule. I'm taking the ln of something to the sixth power. So the sixth power can pop out and leave me with six ln of whatever the something was. So in this case now, using my ln rule, I have six over four x plus two times a tail of 4, because the derivative of 4x plus 2 yields that derivative of 4. And I could simplify this if I wanted to, but I don't. So I'm going to leave it like this and move on. To take the derivative of this expression, I need the chain rule. We've got on the outer function 3 arc sine of something. Well, that's going to be uh, 3 over the square root of 1 minus the something squared, like so. Next, we have to multiply by the derivative of the something, derivative of cosecant of x, which is negative cosecant of x cotan of x. And this one's as good as it's going to get. To take the derivative on this one, I'm going to have to differentiate implicitly since I can't isolate y. So on the left side here, we've got dy over dx. On the right side, we have a product rule involving, if I set up my box and ribbon, secant of x and e to the y. Derivative of secant of x is secant of x tan of x. e to the y's derivative is e to the y times a tail of dy over dx, because we're doing this implicitly. y is itself an inner function. Multiplying this back out, we have e to the y secant of x tan of y. And then we're going to be adding to that uh, secant of x times e to the y d to the, or dy over dx. Not quite done, though, because we have to isolate dy over dx. So we get all those dy over dx terms on one side. I've got the dy over dx that was originally on the left. I'm going to subtract this other dy over dx term with secant of x and e to the y. And then finally, that equals secant of x tan of x e to the y. At this point, I can factor out a dy over dx on the left, leaving me with 1 minus secant of x e to the y. The right hasn't changed a whole lot. Um, but it's going to now because I'm going to divide both sides by 1 minus secant of x e to the y. And this is as good as it's going to get. On this problem, I want the derivative of this triply nested function. Uh, so this is going to be a big chain rule. On the outside, I have sine of something. Derivative of that is going to be cosine of the something. So cosine of cosine of tan of x cubed. Next function in is cosine. Derivative of that is sine, or negative sine, rather, of something. 
Um, so this is going to be negative sine of tan of x cubed that we're multiplying by. Next, we take the derivative of tan. That derivative is secant squared of whatever's inside times any inner tails. So we have secant squared of x cubed. Now we multiply by the derivative of x cubed itself, which is 3x squared. And that is finally done.